she has been betrayed by her own son. This is the most catastrophic thing that's ever happened to her. For Mary now, that is the moment when she says, okay, anything goes. The creator of the King James Bible wrote a demonology book at the height of massive witch hunts by Jacob Shelton. Updated September 22nd. After a tumultuous trip to Denmark to retrieve his bride following a proxy marriage in 1589, King James VI and I allegedly became obsessed with demons, witches, and the devil. At the time, witch hunting was common in Scandinavia, and James reportedly attributed many of the problems he faced on his trip to demons. In order to further explore the horrors of the underworld, he retreated to Scotland, where he wrote what he believed to be a discourse on the science of demons. The book, Demonology, debuted in 1597. On top of being the only book of its kind published by a member of the monarchy, it spurred the witch hunts that impacted Europe and the American colonies in the 17th century. In Demonology, King James breaks down exactly how to spot a demon and explains how they possess someone. However, his book doesn't simply deal with demons. He also dives into the existence of fairies, witches, and werewolves, all with the same mannered, scientific prose. James's writings are at times far-fetched, and while most of his thoughts on the supernatural are now considered archaic, much of what he put to paper in his dissertation formed the basis for modern conceptions of demons. One the book describes demons possessing cadavers and breaking into houses. James's text sometimes describes demons in ways that seem straight out of movies like The Exorcist. According to demonology, demons will often take over bodies and force their way into houses. As creepy as that sounds, his text is even more terrifying. James writes, For if they have assumed a dead body, wherein they lodge themselves, they can easily enough open without din any door or window, and enter in their act. Furthermore, he claims a demon can take over a form that once belonged to an upstanding member of the community and, in doing so, instill anxiety in the populace. To the book notes the strength of a possessed person. According to the king, one of the major telltale signs of possession is when someone is incredibly strong. I account the one of them to be the incredible strength of the possessed creature. Which will far exceed the strength of six of the whitest and wotest of any other men that are not so troubled. James describes possessed individuals as having impenetrable skin as well. And such an irony harms of his shinos so stiff he bend it out, that it were not possible to prick out as it were the skin of any other person so far. 3. The book describes demons using bodies to trick people. In Demonology, James describes the way demons use the bodies of a person's perished loved ones to prey on them. James specifically posits that demons are able to take over the bodies of the genuinely pious because the soul is clean and the body is dirty. He writes that demons inhabit the forms of friends, family members, or famous people in order to speak to people and trick them into doing the bidding of the devil. Scholars assert James's reasoning for this is a way to explain why people claim to see friends and family members they knew to have passed. For the book claims speaking any foreign language is a sign of possession. Modern Christians are divided on whether or not speaking in tongues constitutes demonic possession. But James was less concerned with languages from the beyond and more with people speaking a language other than English. According to the king, one of the main ways to tell if someone is a demon is the speaking of sundry languages that the possessed never could have learned on their own. This belief likely comes from the fact that people in the 16th century were typically isolated and often illiterate even in their native language. A person had to be incredibly well-educated to speak a second language. 5. The book discusses werewolves. While creatures like fairies were considered mere illusions by James, he acknowledged the existence of werewolves. In his text, he writes about lycanthropes as being spirits or people undergoing bouts of mania rather than being the cursed creatures that we think of in a modern context. James notes the ancient Greeks believed in the creatures, but rather than discussing their theories, he gives a personal explanation of their existence. James writes that the Greeks considered these creatures to be men-wolves, but he concludes, if any such thing hath any, 
I take it to have proceeded by the natural superabundance of melancholy, which as we read, that it hath made some think themselves pitchers, and some horses, and some one kind of beast or other. 6. The book dismisses fairies as myths. Although James believed in the existence of demons and witches, when it came to fantastic creatures like fairies, he was much more skeptical. Throughout the text of demonology, James dismisses the ideas of supernatural beings, including fairies, as local myths. The only time James seems to seriously consider the existence of fairies is when he suggests that sighting of these folkloric creatures are illusions created by the devil. James writes, The duel eluded the senses of sundry simple creatures, in making them bluey that they saw and hard such thinges as were nothing so indeed. 7. The book says women are easily tricked by the devil. Why are witches in Christian lore predominantly female? According to James, it's because women are more malleable than men, and therefore more easily tricked by the devil. Demonology puts the ratio of female to male witches at 20 to 1, and this figure went on to form the basis for the witch hunts that took place in the 16th and 17th centuries. James explains why there's an abundance of female witches in the second book of his text. That sex is frailer than man is, so is it easier to be entrapped in these cross snares of the duel, as was our well proud to be true, by the serpent's deceiving of you at the beginning, which makes him the homilier with that sex sensing me. 8. The book refers to the possessed as patience, rather than refer to someone as being possessed or as a body inhabited by a demon, James takes on a clinical view and refers to them as patients. It's likely James stated this in demonology because he was trying to reclaim power from the new reformed church. At the time, the church said that they were the only people who could dispel demons and take care of a possessed person, so by making a demonic intrusion seem more medical, James was essentially removing the church from the equation. 9. The book claims there aren't countless demons. In demonology, James is quick to state that while he definitely believes in demons, he doesn't think they're hiding in every shadow, waiting to snatch the first godless person they find. In fact, he believes this very idea is a trick being perpetrated by the devil and upheld by the Catholic Church. James writes, All devils must be liars, but so they abuse the simplicity of these wretches, that becomes their shawlers, that they make them bluey, that at the fall of Lucifer, some spirits fell in the air, some in the fire, some in the water, some in the land, in which element as they still remain, whereupon they build, that such as fell in the fire, or in the air, are truer than they, who fell in the water or in the land, which is out but mere trattles and forged by the author of Al Deceit. In other words, James claims the devil wants to mislead you into thinking a multitude of demons fell from heaven with him, when in fact, it was a simple few. 10. The book says the only way to save yourself from a demon is to fast and pray. According to James, there's no visit from an exorcist that can help you. The Pope can't come to your rescue and you'll never be able to fight off your demons physically. The only thing that can save you from possession by a demon is to pray and fast. More to the point, James wants to make sure people know they can't just perform some kind of mystical rite to fend off a similarly mystical creature. James impresses upon his readers that anyone, specifically the Catholic Church, who claims to offer respite from the devil via sacrament or custom is merely selling you a bill of goods. The king specifies that God is the only thing that can save you. 11. James based his book on the Bible. It's not out of line to wonder where James got his information about demons. After all, it's not as if there were tons of manuscripts about demonology. In fact, the only major book preceding James's publication was the Malleus Malficarum, which spread across Europe thanks to the newly invented printing press. Scholars believe James did most of his research using the Bible. It's believed that because the post-Reformation church in Scotland was mostly Calvinist, holding the belief that only the Bible contained the truth about God, the king wouldn't have been using. 
anything but that book for a reference. 12. The book likely influenced Shakespeare's Macbeth. Demonology didn't just influence the witch hunts of the time. It also likely played an important role in shaping one of the Western world's most important pieces of literature, Macbeth. In the Scottish play, William Shakespeare creates a trio of weird sisters, a group of witches who use their knowledge of the future to propel Macbeth down a path of ruin. Scholars debate whether Shakespeare used James's text to create the characters as a nod toward the king's work or as satirical commentary. In Demonology, James writes that witches can raise storms and tempestes in the air, either upon sea or land, and Shakespeare directly acknowledges this in the witches' dialogue. Early in the play, after a sailor's wife refuses to hand over some chestnuts, the first witch states, and the very port they blow, all the quarters that they know, the shipman's card. I will drain him dry as hay. 13. According to the book, demons live in Scandinavia. James notes that most demons can be found in Scandinavia, specifically in Cubby and Sukubi. James writes that demons live in Finland and Norway, because that's where the duel finds greatest ignorance and barbarity, there as ails he groseliest. At the time of James's reign in England, Scandinavia was seen as a haven for witches, the region was undertaking its own witch hunts. While the grim investigations and trials have been over centuries, witchcraft has proved resilient in Scandinavia. It's currently believed hundreds of Danes are practicing witches.